The knives came out during last night's vice presidential debate, and so, of course, did the left-wing, shall we call them, mistruths. From fake news to fake history, here are six of the biggest whoppers Kamala Harris dropped last night, and why their total, how does Joe Biden put it again? Malarkey? Malarkey. Number one, Harris said President Trump has refused to denounce white supremacists and called Nazis in Charlottesville very fine people. There were fine people on both sides. Lord, how many times do we have to debunk this pile of crap? Seriously, I'm embarrassed for liberals at this point because this is like clinging to the notion that the earth is flat. The only thing that stuck around longer than this myth is the fly on Mike Pence's head, and at least that was mildly entertaining. No. For the last time, Trump did not call Nazis very fine people. He correctly pointed out the fact that some local Charlottesville residents, who were very fine people, had shown up that day to protest the removal of a historical Confederate statue in their city. That is true. Just as it's also true that Trump has denounced white supremacists, neo-Nazis, the KKK, and racism repeatedly. Unlike, say, a former senator, who shall not be named, who gave the eulogy at Robert Byrd's funeral. Robert Byrd possessed that quintessential American quality. Just saying. Of course, here's the media reaction to Harris dropping this load of untruth. Number two, President Trump called the coronavirus a hoax. The president said it was a hoax. Again, with the myths that have already been debunked. But hey, they're going to peddle them anyway because it's an election year. But no, Trump never called the coronavirus a hoax, ever. He called Democrats' attempts to pin the pandemic on his administration a hoax. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. You know that, right? Coronavirus. They're politicizing it. We did one of the great jobs, you say, House President Trump doing. They go, oh, not good, not good. They tried the impeachment hoax. That was on a perfect conversation. They tried anything. They tried it over and over. They've been doing it since you got in. It's all turning. They lost. It's all turning. Think of it. Think of it. And this is their new hoax. Which it is. Now, maybe you've drunk the CNN Kool-Aid on this one, but when PolitiFact calls out fake news, that's saying something. And here they are explaining for the 5011th time that Trump never called the virus a hoax. Read it and weep. Not, of course, that the media called Harris out on this because, of course... Number three, President Trump has made America less safe by stoking unrest in the Middle East. Harris accused Trump of putting the U.S. at risk by nixing the Iran nuclear deal, which had proven about as effective as a back pocket on a t-shirt. Now, I'm no expert here, and I'm certainly not running for president with exactly zero experience with foreign policy or anything, but I'm not sure it's wise to claim that America is less safe from Middle Eastern threats under a president who was literally just nominated for three Nobel Prizes for helping bring stability and peace to, well, the Middle East. One of Trump's nominations is for helping broker relations between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. Another is for not getting the U.S. into any more wars. David Flint, the Australian law professor who nominated him, said, He is really producing peace in the world in a way which none of his predecessors did. Right and he stuff. fully deserves the Nobel Peace Prize. Christian Tybring Jetty, a Norwegian politician who also nominated Trump, said the president has done more trying to create peace between nations than most other Peace Prize nominees by ending a 39-year-old streak of American presidents either starting a war or bringing the United States into an international armed conflict. Hmm. So no new wars, peace between Jews and Arabs, and one less Soleimani running around like a lunatic with bombs. How exactly are we less safe again? Number four. There's a weird obsession that President Trump has had with getting rid of whatever accomplishment was achieved by President Obama and Vice President Biden. For example, they created within the White House an office that basically was responsible for monitoring pandemics. They got away, they, they got rid of it. And the bull keeps piling up this time largely spread by Facebook memes. Seriously. For the 758th time, no, President Trump did not disband the pandemic response team that Obama had set up. He streamlined it. 
Probably because it didn't need to be some 400 odd people, which is what it had grown to, and even Obama's staff thought it was too big. Because contrary to what leftists might believe, presidents do not have to keep in place every single bloated, overstaffed, overfunded committee that their predecessor let explode out of control. So the Trump administration consolidated the team for efficiency, but kept the biodefense staff. Now we know all of this from an op-ed in the Washington Post written by Tim Morrison, who is far from a Trump superfan and who was the former senior director for counterproliferation and biodefense on the National Security Council. He came on in 2018 and he testified that he had inherited a strong and skilled staff in the counterproliferation and biodefense directorate, you know, the pandemic response team. So if you're looking to blame gross government incompetence and lack of readiness for people's nanas dying of COVID, there's a dude in New York. I'll send you his number. I did. I did. Uh, I assumed full responsibility. Now, number five. Joe Biden did not say that he wants to ban fracking. Would there be any place for fossil fuels, including coal and fracking, in a Biden administration? No, it would be, we, would, we would work it out. We would make sure it's eliminated and no more subsidies for either one of those. Um, you know what? And for that matter? There's no question I'm in favor of banning fracking. So, yeah. And, 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 starting, and starting with what we can do on day one around public lands, right? And, um, and then there has to be legislation. But yes, and this is something I've taken on in California. I have a history of working on this issue. And number six, finally, that weird Abraham Lincoln thing. Look, I love a good 1864 story as much as the next guy watching a debate in 2020, but Harris might want to pick up a history book next time she decides to tap old Honest Abe into the ring for backup. Abraham Lincoln was up for re-election, and it was 27 days before the election, and a seat became open on the United States Supreme Court. Abraham Lincoln's party was in charge not only of the White House, but the Senate. But Honest Abe, said, it's not the right thing to do. Yeah, that's not true. Here's what happened. Lincoln didn't send a nominee because at the time the Senate wasn't in session. In fact, he sent a nominee the day after the session began in December and Justice Salmon Chase was confirmed that day. So history one, Harris zero. Kind of like the number of times she's been nominated for president. The truth is the truth, regardless of your politics. And if the media aren't going to call out this mess, we have to. Because if there's one thing Harris was right about last night, it's that the American people deserve the truth. And peddling debunked hoaxes, making up history, and fear-mongering during a pandemic isn't truth. It's trickery. And that fact doesn't change during an election. And that's your Reality Check America. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page, like us on Facebook and Twitter, and stay sane out there. <laughs>